So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozzuolo from Curvan.com and today we're not going to cover a DAX function but we're going to do something better. If you are a DAX beginner, I'm going to share with you a recommended learning path for it. So which steps should you take to actually learn DAX, uh, especially which videos I would recommend you to watch first. This is a question that I get very often and it is about time that I answer it. So we will do that in a second. Stay tuned. Okay, so how do you learn DAX and uh, which videos should you watch first? And uh, if you come from an Excel background, I actually would recommend two things first. The first thing would actually be to watch my why, what is Vertipack and why is it so fast? And the reason for that is because as an Excel user, you are used to access each individual cell. And you know, you are able to modify that and work with that. You won't be able to do this in Power Pivot, and I'm sure that you've already noticed that. But if you watch those three videos first, it will give you an idea of not only why you can do it, but also how the Power Pivot engine works, so how things, how the engine works to calculate things and compress things and, you know, to do things more efficient and fast. And I hope that that gives you a background. You don't have to understand everything at first, but it is good to keep those things in mind. I wish I knew them when I started learning Power Pivot, you know, back in when it was 2010. I learned it in Excel, and because, you know, Power Pivot looks like Excel, it was just so confusing and frustrating for me, like, why can't I access this, this cell? So I'm guessing that you are, if you're a beginner, you know, having the same frustrations. So go watch that video, it will help you. My tip number two, it is before you touch any DAX, learn modeling. Because if you learn that, you will be able to create reports without minimal DAX. It's in some cases, okay? Uh, so what is modeling? Modeling is, you know, when you get the data that you need into Power BI through Power Query, and you know you get all these tables and you start to put in relationships between them and what shape your table should have. Should it have a star or a, a snowflake or you know. I, I have a few videos on relationships I would link here. Just go and check them out. I definitely should do more videos about modeling. If you model your models correctly, your reports correctly, your files, your tables, your tax is so much easier. If you do it wrong, I mean, it doesn't matter how much tax you know, it just won't work. One of the things that, I mean, if you've been working with Power BI from the beginning, you know this, but what the Power BI team did in the beginning is the relationships between tables, it was bi-directional by default, okay? And I don't know how long it was like that. It was like, a, a, I don't know, perhaps a year, a year and a half, two years. And, uh, you know, the, BI developers and the enterprise people that had a lot of data, there is a disaster. But in the mind, in terms of for beginners and small models, it just has no impact whatsoever and it makes things easier. They have removed that. Now relationships between tables are single direction and makes stacks a little bit hard. So you have to activate those directions, by directions when you where you need it, which is of course a best practice, but hey, you have to learn to crawl before you run, right? So it is, learn, learn modeling. Make sure that your models are as good as you can because it will make DAX so much easier. And I have delivered reports with minimal DAX just because, you know, if the model is correct, everything will work and will filter the way you want it to filter. It's just when you need to do specific calculations that you need to go into DAX. But with that said, once you know, you know, how Vertipack works a little bit, I will continue those series, but what I have now, you can watch it. And you know how to model, you have to start working, you know, with DAX, DAX functions. 
And the Power BI team has actually classified the functions into six groups. And you have a math and trigonometry, I have a cheat list. Uh, I have a statistical, text, date, filter, time intelligence, and other information also, and logic. So there are quite a few uh, categories or groups where they have grouped these functions in. And uh, I would recommend to start with the math and statistical functions because and there is a reason for the madness and is that they are very similar to Excel but they are not Excel and it will force you to learn some concepts that are fundamental to writing the X and you need to know those concepts before you do anything else you know before you go into functions and tables and virtual tables and you know virtual relationships and whatnot so some some x you could do some round you can do for the statistical functions you have average you have count you have max mean you have rank summarized super useful functions that will force you to learn the basics it will you won't be able to write those functions unless you understand the basics so i think they are absolutely fantastic once you have those covered i will go through some of the filter functions and the filter functions are of course the trickiest ones but i will go for calculate i will go for all all except i will go for filter and i know i've done a video that i said okay yeah hey maybe you shouldn't use filter that often ignore them are you a beginner ignore it completely you have to crawl first learn filter learn all learn calculate there are you know, when I learned Power Pivot, there were not a lot of resources. Now you have hundreds and thousands of people like willing to help. And there's a ton and ton and ton of information out there, not just my videos. So go there and check them out. And these are the functions you'll find. You'll find calculate, you will find all, all except, you will find the filter, super useful. So start with those. And then you can move slowly into time intelligence. I absolutely adore time intelligence. Is, is the, the Power BI team has done these functions where they took away the complexity and they give us just, you know, just put column date and put whatever you want to measure and it works. And it's fantastic. And I've gone through the functions that I've done and I haven't done quite many of those. I should do more. They are really useful. And if you are doing you know, business intelligence, hey, you are going to be measuring what happened yesterday, the day before, period, uh, parallel period, you know, seasonality, and you're going to do all these things on basically all the reports, right? Perhaps not the first thing you do, but you will definitely get there if you are going to do useful reports. So very, very useful. Once you have those down, make sure you go back to filter, and then you can start learning more about the complicity of how things are getting filtered in the background, right? How, how the filtering of the tables, you can build virtual tables, virtual relationships, blah, blah, blah. When it comes to the logical and the informational functions, you will learn that, I would say, on a need to know basis. And when you need to do something like that, you'll pick them up and then, you know, I have videos, there are resources everywhere about those. No need to spend some time just to specifically learn them. You'll be able to use them when you need them. They are not that difficult. So to summarize, math and trigonometry, statistical, I would go through filter, I will go to time intelligence, and then text date. Text and date you can do, you know, I would say when you feel a bit frustrated with tax, go for those because they are easy and they will bring your confidence up. Say, ooh, I can do those. I can do anything. Just go for it. Make you know, trick your, your brain to, to think that you can, and then you will. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that sometimes. So those are the steps. To help you along the way, you know, I have all these DAX writers, I have like, a, I don't know, 80 something videos on DAX. So you, you, of course, can go there and check them out. What I didn't have, it was the classification that I'm talking about. So I have added the classification to the DAX glossary that I have at Kerbal.com. So you will be able now to search by, for example, oh, she said that you wish to start with math and trigonometry. So you will be able to go to category, math and trigonometry, and you will see the videos that I've covered. 
I have some work to do, how <laughs> to tell you that. But I'll tell you that at the end. So let me show you how the DAX glossary looks now and how you can filter by category. And then we chit chat a little bit more at the end. Okay, so I'll see you in a second. Okay, so here we are on curval.com and if you go here learning resources for Power BI you will find the Power BI glossary and this is the place where I uh, store all the DAX functions that I have covered which as you can see are quite a few but I thought it was more actually anyhow what I have added now is this category so I was saying that I would start for example with math and trigonometry functions so you can actually select these and then you will see the functions that I have covered and I have I have for example sum and some x and then the statistical functions I have the average the count the distinct count max select columns summarize rank is like super popular so you know you will be able to find the DAX functions that are, or the order there of the DAX functions that I recommend just by using this category part. Again, if you want to, you can just, if you want to search just for um, calculate, you can just click on the C or just write as usual. So hopefully these uh, will help you find the functions that I am recommending. So, okay, so now you see how the glossary looks and hopefully that will help you, you know, pick the functions that I have already done and in the right order to learn them. Uh, it was actually very useful for me to do that because it forced me to go through all the functions that I have covered, you know, to be able to categorize them. I mean, I have some work left <laughs> to do, I can say that. Um, so we will continue with Dax Fridays until this list is empty and then we will figure out what we do next with Dax, okay? Um, I was thinking, if you've been doing Dax for a while and you feel comfortable with it, it would be fantastic if you could share your tips and tricks for learning Dax. Uh, what functions would you recommend to start with? Uh, what things puzzled you or puzzled you? Or, you know, just give beginners some tips. Uh, I think it would be really, really fun. If there is any specific function that I have not covered that you would like me to cover, again, just contact me and I will put them on my list and I will do them as soon as I can. I, I am listening and I do your videos. Sometimes it just takes me a little bit longer for different reasons, you know. So with that said, have a fantastic weekend. It is really nice weather here in Sweden, so it will be a good weekend for me anyhow. And I will see you on Monday. So take care. Bye.